Hello and welcome to State of the Unions, the first in a series of Teachers TV News specials, looking at the main teaching unions as they hold their annual conferences. For this programme we've come to Bournemouth to focus on the ATL, the Association of Teachers and Lecturers. Later I'll be talking to Dr Mary Bowsted, the Union's General Secretary, asking the questions that teachers say they want answered. In the main hall, delegates have been debating a wide range of issues with resolutions on behaviour, health and safety and the impact of childcare and extended schools on families. They also heard how comments and video clips posted on websites like Rate My Teacher and YouTube were upsetting teachers. In her speech to conference, Mary Bowsted called for better pay and conditions for support staff in the classroom. She also attacked Ofsted, saying its school inspections could be taken over by school improvement partners. When Education Secretary Alan Johnson spoke to conference, he talked about the importance of personalised learning. In particular, he spoke about the new focus on assessing each child's progress and how teachers' judgments would play a part in that. It's clear from the recent consultation on progression that you share our appetite to look afresh at performance assessments. Teachers deserve more credit when they've helped a child to make significant progress, irrespective of how that child fares in their threshold exams. So we'll be pursuing these ideas further in the imminent Making Good Progress pilots. We want to examine how your internal judgments can be better interwoven with external tests, helping to track and support each child's progress with minimal extra burdens. In total, there are around 500 delegates here representing the ATL's 160,000 members across the UK. So what did they make of Alan Johnson's speech and what do they think are the big issues for their General Secretary to deal with? It was a lot better than I have heard at previous conferences from previous Secretaries of State. His heart is in the right place. He talked about personalised learning. He talked about bringing some zest back into teaching. I'm impressed with Alan Johnson. I'm impressed with his credentials, with his background and with what he says. He's happy to say, I know we may not agree on this, but he is always willing to talk. It showed his background as a trade unionist. Uh, I think he, I felt he was more on our side than previous Secretary of States have been. I listened very carefully to what Alan Johnson said. He spoke for 40 minutes and said nothing. There was nothing new. He said how well the government are doing. He said how well teachers are doing, but we didn't learn anything. What points would you like to, to put to, what questions would you like to put to your General Secretary? What would you like her to take forward from here? What, and what action? Um, I think we, we are concerned with the behavioural aspect within the school of our young people. Um, how we can enforce um, things, because there, are vi there is violence within our schools. Um, and the, the violence seems to be perpetrated by very young children. Um, and I've had this in the past weeks, I've been in school, where six-year-olds have thumped teachers. In the past, schools were all about heads and teachers, and now there are so many other people, classroom assistants, technicians, who have a real impact on the children, but their role is being neglected both in pay and conditions. It's just whether they, the teachers are listened to and that the formative assessment, the assessment for learning is actually going to be what is going to be prominent and which is what teachers value and we know works for children, works for teachers, progresses learning. Whether we actually see that as a reality rather than the high stakes assessment and testing which is, which is being given prominence. Delegates giving their view about what they see as the key issues. So when I talked to Mary Balsted here in Bournemouth, I put some of those points to her. A number of issues have come up at your conference, but one that seems to have come through very strongly from the delegates is concerns about bullying in, and discipline in schools in all forms. But one particular issue concern, and this is this cyber bullying. Uh, how serious is it? I think it's getting more of a serious issue than it ever has been before. And part of the problem is that there are so many new forms of media now which children and young people are experts in and which their teachers aren't. 
and the forms of bad behaviour which previously would have embarrassed the teacher in the classroom with the pupils but would largely have stayed in the classroom now there's an opportunity to post that on a website and the teacher's embarrassment becomes universal so we've got examples of teachers who've had uh, videos taken of their lesson video clips taken of their lesson and being transposed onto the internet we've had examples of teachers having their lessons recorded and uh, being put on the internet without their permission or knowledge We've had really serious cases. For example, one teacher had her photograph taken of her face. That was transposed onto a naked body and then sent round to the boys in the school. Now that completely devastates a teacher. It takes away professional dignity, professional respect, and the proper distance between teachers and pupils so effective learning can take place. So we're saying it is a growing problem. Is there anything that can be done with those people who host the website? Well, we're exploring that with them and we're trying to get a meeting with them. What we mm. want, we know that you can't close down the websites because you can't close down fascist websites which target trade unionists so you can't close down websites where young people are putting nasty things about teachers but what we do want is a monitoring process uh, so when something's obviously offensive and inappropriate there's a way that the website host won't put it on and we do also want some, a complaints procedure so if a teacher reads something which is offensive untrue deflammatory uh, they can have that taken off the website. They, the website tell us, the hosts, they tell us they have a monitoring procedure but we see, we see no evidence of it. And on the wider issue of discipline, the new powers came in April the 1st, are they going to make a difference? I mean, because also we've heard from your delegates concerned that it's all very well having this clear in law, it's also about how you implement it, you know, whether there's the right training to, to go with it and so on. Yes, I think it's a part of a package isn't it? I think it's very helpful that the Secretary of State has brought the new powers in and has emphasised how important they are because uh, parents, pupils, no one should be in any doubt that teachers do have a right to restrain, they do have a right to enforce discipline, they do have a right to confiscate. Now all that's very important but that won't mean anything unless the school fulfils its requirement to have a disciplinary policy and if that disciplinary policy then has to be understood by everyone and enforced. We need much clearer policies on discipline and we need school leadership teams to support teachers and support support staff in enforcing those policies. At the moment, too many of my members tell me that if they complain about a child's behaviour, there's an implication that they're not teaching correctly or they can't manage the class and yet these children go around causing havoc across the school. Moving to something you picked up in your speech and that's Ofsted, the inspectors. You said there were surplus to requirements, in fact you're quite tough on them, you said uh, they have a slash and burn approach, um, but surely we had a lighter touch from them, there's shorter notice now before they come in to inspect schools, uh, what more do you want? Well, we don't believe the light touch is light touch at all. If you actually look at the Ofsted, the new inspection process, yes, they're in schools for a short amount of time, yes, there's less notice, but what's happening is schools are imposing inspection upon themselves all the time. So in local authorities now, schools are either waiting for the Ofsted inspection, going through it or recovering from it. Local authorities are sending in their monitoring intervention teams. We have the intensive support programme, which means that children are set uh, levels every six weeks and then inspectors, local authority inspectors come in and monitor whether the child's meeting those levels. And so what's happening is the system is imposing inspection upon itself. Leadership teams feel they have to do this and this means that teachers are labouring under a huge weight of bureaucracy and stress and pressure. But is, is that really the fault of the inspectors or is that teachers and schools actually just putting too much pressure on themselves because of their concern about the inspection process? Well, I get a bit fed up of Ofsted because what Ofsted say, I get more than a bit fed up, but Ofsted say that's not our intention. Ofsted never take the responsibility for their actions. Now, if it's a responsible inspection agency, they will put out guidance, strong guidance, to local authorities and to schools saying, this really is a light touch process. We really don't want you to impose inspection burden upon yourselves. We don't think this is good practice. Ofsted never do that. They just say, we come in and we look at outcomes. Ofsted doesn't. Ofsted is predicated on process. Teachers fear and loathe it, and it is not improving our education system. And clearly the government is determined to keep up pressure on schools that it sees as either failing, underperforming or even coasting. Are you disappointed that there seems to be no let up in, in this pressure on schools or is it inevitable? I am disappointed because I think it's in the end going to be completely counterproductive. Um, we have the most over-tested, most over-regulated system in the world now. Our children are over-tested to a point of exhaustion and that might be okay 
if the tests told you anything worthwhile. But they don't. We know that uh, a short, sharp, high stakes test such as the SATs is highly likely to be inaccurate. And yet, on this inaccurate uh, measure, schools are being put through hell. Now we're saying obviously schools should be accountable, schools should have high standards, schools should do the best for the children they teach and education can't be a secret garden. We've got to be accountable to the public and to the state. But the way we're measuring success is wrong. But uh, interesting you move on to, to testing because I wanted to ask you about that because although uh, Alan Johnson has made quite clear that tests are still here to stay at our league tables, he told your conference that, Nevertheless, there seem to be some slightly different messages coming from elsewhere within government. Um, the head of uh, the QCA, for example, Ken Boston, talking about maybe having just a sample uh, tested students, whereas others could be working on teaching their own teacher assessments. Do you think we're seeing a bit of a change in the tide and that eventually we will see the end of this national tests? Well, I think, yes, there is a change in mood music. ATL believes, we, we predict that uh, English scores will go down in the PISA league tables, the international comparisons. They've done that previously for the past four years and we think they'll go down further. Now how long can the government keep saying we've got rising standards of education when in international comparisons that doesn't show to be true? Eventually the system's going to have to change and we think now it's a matter of time. Another issue always fairly high on teachers' concerns, I haven't heard quite so much about it this year as perhaps past years, is workload. Mm. There is still concern about that. Is the workload agreement working? It's, yes, it is working. I mean, the workload agreement was a seminal moment. It was a line in the sand. It was a time when the government finally said, teachers are doing too much and they're doing too many of the wrong things. And you go around the country, as I do, and you talk to primary school teachers, and they will not give up their planning, preparation and assessment time for all the tea in China. But we have to do more. We have to make sure there really is a downward limit on cover in secondary schools. And more than that, we've got to have a new investigation. We're pushing very hard for a new investigation into new pressures on workload. The National Agreement was signed in 2003. The world of teaching and learning has changed now. There are new pressures and we can't just remain fixed to a model which worked in 2003. We've got to reinvent the workload agreement four years, late, four years on. And staying with sort of paying conditions, uh, another big issue for, for certainly a particular group of your members is uh, national paying conditions for support staff. Um, is that going to happen? I think, again, it's inevitable. Um, we know at the moment within the government there is a, a working group looking at a framework for national paying conditions. That's running into some problems at the moment, but in the end, I think national paying conditions for support staff is not only just fair and equitable, but inevitable. I certainly sense from your conference very strong feelings about this issue. If government doesn't move on that, do you think there might be the possibility of some form of action to, to try and concentrate government's mind? I think there is actually a strong possibility of that, yes. Because it's quite interesting now, teachers and support staff have really changed their views towards each other and now you will find many teachers really understanding and valuing their support staff and feeling very professionally aligned to them. The old divisions and boundaries are breaking down. Now that doesn't imply a lack of professionalism amongst teachers, it implies that people understand that working in teams is far more effective than working alone and teachers feel very strongly that their support staff colleagues should be paid properly. Mary Bowsted, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. That's it from the State of the Unions here in Bournemouth reporting on the ATL's annual conference. Watch out for more Teachers TV news specials from the NUT and the NASUWT conferences where I'll be interviewing their General Secretaries. But for now, goodbye.